Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have... Nell Godden. Yes. It was a great interview. Yes. We had a lot of fun talking with yes, Nell. And, we did. Um, yeah. We talked about direct sales. She mm-hmm. had had um, some health issues mm-hmm. and her author business had kind of, she said was kind of in a decline and she's used direct sales to bring things back. So we dig into that. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, it was very interesting. She started out yep. writing literary fiction, talked mm-hmm. about how she transitioned to genre fiction and what yep. she wished she'd known about that. And just really good, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, practical ideas. Yeah, just really practical advice. Yeah, I thought I thought it was too. Yeah, and you know, I lo- I wrote down her definition of success as what works for you, and mm-hmm. I think that's great. And I think we all need to remember that that it's not it's mm-hmm. not a cookie cutter. We've talked about that a lot of times, mm-hmm. but it's a good reminder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so that's so, coming up. Yeah. Um, what's been going on with you? Well, <laughs> can't really talk about it, but I will say that there are some things coming with my, um, consulting mm-hmm. and I'm going to kind of expand that and I'm very excited about it. Um, but I'll talk more about it later mm-hmm. other than to say, I do do consulting and, yes. uh, and it was point, it was pointed out that I do not mention that enough. <laughs> so right. I do consulting for anything you want to talk about except grammar. I mean, <laughs> we can look at your Amazon page and we can, I'll tell you if it's a sell, if it's selling or not, you know, why mm-hmm. it's not selling. I'll look at your blurb. I'll look at your, um, cover. We'll, we can mm-hmm. talk about series. We can talk about newsletter building. We can talk about branding. Mm-hmm. So add yeah. copy, all right. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you really have a knack for looking at something and figuring out like a good slogan or a good angle to focus on mm-hmm. that. Um, I think you either have that or you don't. And if you yeah. don't have it, <laughs> you need somebody like you to help you go. Cause you've given me ideas that I've like, yeah. oh yeah. Cause like my letter subscription, mm-hmm. that was something that you mentioned a long time ago. You said that would be a great like newsletter magnet for me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm too overwhelmed. I can't do it. But then later on I circled back and I was like, yeah, that is a really good idea. So, yeah. you know, you have those little Thank you. things Thank that you're kind of super creative Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, people can find a link to that on your website, right? On my website for consulting. Yeah. Yeah. Author author serv- yeah. Go ahead. No, it just, I think it says author services and consulting or something. Yeah. So I'll put a link in the show notes for that. Okay. All yeah. right. Thanks. But yeah, that's about it for me. Not a whole, I mean, I got a big long list of things yeah. I'm, I need to do <laughs> and want to do. And so, but yeah, no. Yeah, me too. And it's yeah. like. It's a, it's a list. I was thinking about this going, it's a nested list because yeah. it's like, like Roman numeral one. And then underneath it, there's like six things that contribute to getting, you know, yeah, so, yeah. so I think I need to just make a list and then just try and knock things off one at a time. Yeah. But it was, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. What, what else is going on with you? The direct sales? Is uh, that what yeah. You're doing? yeah. Yeah. I, I also learned, don't try and do direct sales and send out a newsletter when you're away, because I have a tendency <laughs> to mess things up. So I, I, oh, I, that's one thing I'm doing. If your audiobooks are wide, mm-hmm. you can get codes from find away voices to give away copies on Spotify. So yeah, you can generate like a hundred copies, I think for each title Mm -hmm. that will, you can send listeners to Spotify to listen. And um, I guess they don't have reviews. They have ratings, which I didn't understand. You can only rate like a star rating kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's no detailed review there, but I thought that would get people, you know, Mm -hmm downloading and listening and kind of get some activity yeah. on my titles. Yeah. So I mentioned that. And then I forgot to put in, uh, Adriel is going to help me distribute them. And I forgot to put the dot com on the end of her email. And so then everybody's like, ha, it's not working. <laughs> ah. So I ended up replying to a ton of, or forwarding a ton of stuff. Yeah. But, and then I did direct sales this week. My mm-hmm. direct sales ended on the 31st. I did two weeks of order a paperback book and I will 
uh, sign it and mail it to you, like for a gift. And mm-hmm. that went really well. I had like, uh, I think around 17 orders, mm-hmm. which I thought was good. And some of them mm-hmm. were, a few of them were multiple orders, not just one book. Right. Um, it was good just to get me doing it mm-hmm. and, you know, get a page set up and try it. And, um, and what I discovered was that I said, you know, if you're international, email me and I'll tell you what the shipping is. Cause you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be so expensive. Yeah. And I had yeah. one person email me and I looked up the shipping and it was going to be like $50. And I said, you know, I'm happy to send you like a signed book plate. If you want to do that for mm-hmm. free, if mm-hmm. you just want to order a copy and I'll, and they were so excited. So no, I think that's, that's going to, yeah, that's going to be my thing. Now, if I mm-hmm. do print and you're international and mm-hmm. you want just, you know, I'll send you signed book plates and that'll probably be a solution that will work for most people. Yeah. So that's yeah. great. That's a great idea. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, sure. um, yeah. So you just did, so you have, you have a landing page on your website for that? No, I'm using Thrivecart to set up oh. an individual page because I haven't mm-hmm. done the whole Shopify store. Yeah. So I went ahead and got Thrivecart because mm-hmm. I figured that's a one-time payment. Yeah. It's not like Shopify, you know, is recurring, which mm-hmm. I've got that too, because I'm trying to figure all this out. You know, I've got mm-hmm. like more things than I probably need, but I got the one-time payment for Thrivecart and you can set up a landing page and it has a checkout page. Mm. And, you know, I just sent people there and now the page is expired. And it, I put up this little message on it that says, Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, Sarah, will have another signing in the future. Sign up to be notified at, when it comes, you know, just put a link mm-hmm. to my email, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my newsletter sign up. Yeah. So yeah, I liked it. And it took me a while to set up the page, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. It didn't take me like weeks. That's good. So, That's good. Yeah. And then will you do these like once a quarter or once twice a uh, year? Or? Yeah. I'm thinking like one, like, like spring and fall probably. Mm, like that's good like idea. this time yeah. I kind of aimed it at like, Hey, these make great gifts like for mother's day mm-hmm. for birthdays. Mm-hmm. And then in the fall I can emphasize like Christmas, like, sure. but I need to do it early. Cause you've got to mm-hmm. order the books and have them yeah. sent to you and signed. So yeah. That's yeah. Good. So I was pretty happy. And so I guess now the next thing will be to try one with digital stuff and see mm-hmm. how that goes, mm-hmm. yeah. but I'll do that later. I got to get right. these out and get my manuscript off to my mm-hmm. copy editor. Yeah. So, all yeah. right. Well, let's yeah. let, that's great. And we should get on with the interview because it's yes. great too. And, but, um, go ahead first. Oh yeah. Please. Shoot. Yes. <laughs> we have well, a new supporter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do. We have a new supporter. So we got to talk about that. Mm-hmm. We have Jerry Anthony and they picked the sparkly star, the big star mm-hmm. with the two little stars. Mm-hmm. And um, if you want to support the podcast, if you've received value and want to show your support, you can go to wish I'd known for writers.com slash support. And we're mm-hmm. just so excited and thankful for the supporters we have. And y'all just are keeping us going. You're inspiring mm-hmm. us to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate it. And we are doing a live QA for our supporters, but because Jamie's schedule is a nightmare, we're changing the date. (laughs) Sorry, y'all. Yeah. It's not going to be sooner. We're going to push it out just a little bit further to um, April 11th. And that is a Tuesday Tuesday. Mm -hmm. at 7 PM. So that'll give Mm -hmm. people time to prepare and get everything Mm -hmm. squared away. If you need to like, I don't know, get a sitter or something. I doubt Mm -hmm. that, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) clear your calendar. Ready, <laughs> ready yourself for us. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but anyway, so that we'll we'll be sending out uh, links for the Zoom call for that uh, this okay. week. Those look out this week. All right, all right. So all right. I think that's all the now business. Now we can get on <laughs> with the interview. Right. Yes. Yeah, so here's Nell. <laughs> well, today we are really happy to talk with Nell Godden. Hi, Nell. How are you? Hey, I'm good. And we're so glad you're here. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie and Sarah. (laughs) Well, let's read your bio and then we'll get into the questions. Nell grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and has lived in New England, France, and New York City. She's had many jobs she was not very good at, (laughs) which is, I'm sure that's not true, but it is funny. She got an MFA from Columbia in the 80s and has been writing stories for her whole life. Oh, that's great. So tell us how you got into writing and do you think the MFA paid off? I'm going to add that. Yeah. Uh, Well, 
I really have been writing since I was a child. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it was always my favorite thing in school. It was the thing I would do outside of school. Oh, that's cool. I'm not a very good student. Otherwise, I got in trouble a lot. I was terrible at math, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't math either. So yeah, yeah. that's, you're, that's you're well my, known on this podcast. Yeah, you're yeah. my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I started out, though, I wanted to be a literary writer. Okay. That was my ambition. Uh -huh. And so I I was trying to figure out what I could do for work because I didn't have any expectation I would be able to make a living at that. Uh -huh. And I tried different things. Like I said, I was bad at a lot of them. And uh -huh. um, then I went to Columbia for the MFA. Still very much on the literary right. path right. at that point. So it was worth yeah. it in, a, yeah. in some ways. Was it worth it really in terms of my writing e education? Not so much. Okay. I did meet some people who were really, really good. I had a couple of teachers who were amazing. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. You know, and one of them gave me probably the best writing advice I've ever gotten, which is persistence is the most important quality you can have. Oh. It isn't talent. It's no, that is really true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. That was really helpful. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then, you know, then I continued trying to do that, but I had to do other things to make a living. Sure. And by the time I got in my late 30s and was having a family, I just really wasn't doing any writing at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until my marriage broke up and I was desperate to find something to do, yeah. to make some money that I got back into writing and tried and changed my mindset completely to, okay, I'm going to try to make some money doing this mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. be an artiste, you right. know, right. A, right. Right. different goals now. Right. That is so Best decision ever. I mean, it was yeah. great. And I don't, I don't look back with yearning at literary writing and wish I could do that. I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. Right. Now, did you pursue a traditional path or a you know, traditional publishing path at that time or did no. you go straight indie? I went straight into indie. And then how like how did you know about indie? Like how did that come about? Uh, so let's see. This was 20 13, 2014, when I first uh, started doing this, it was yeah. just mm -hmm. starting, you know, yes, Amazon yes, yes, was yes. just mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to go through the hell of, you know, calling people I know to get me an in to yes. write, yeah. write these miserable query letters and mm -hmm. all of that stuff is not things I'm good at. Yes. And I thought, well, I can just write something and slap it up there and see what happens. Right. And I went to visit a friend of mine when my personal life situation was at the worst. Right. And I was like, I have to find a way to make money. I've got to. And at that point, I'm in my 50s. I'm not as yeah. hireable, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, she said, you know, I have this friend who made a million dollars last year writing vampire romances. Oh, my gosh. And I said... Okay, I'll write a vampire. Sign me up, baby. <laughs> I can write anything. For a million dollars, I will write anything. So I spent the summer writing a vampire romance, and that was sort of my learning for a mm -hmm. lot of things, including mm -hmm. how to self-publish and right. how to write fast right. and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was a complete flop, but I learned a lot from it. Right, yeah, right. So what did you eventually transition into writing? Mysteries. Mysteries. That's what you write now. And yeah. the reason I did that was I really quite enjoyed writing the vampire romances. They were mm -hmm. so, I mean, it was pretty much the opposite of the old literary stuff that I used to do. Right. So it felt very freeing. Right. I right. didn't feel like I was going to be judged. I was going to be writing under a pen name. So I felt like I could just let it rip. I could be really mad. <laughs> so it was fun. You know, I yeah, enjoyed yeah. myself quite a lot. The readers, however, did not enjoy what I. 
<laughs> they were not picking up what you were putting down. <laughs> no, they were not. Because I didn't understand at that point all of the romance parameters that yeah. I needed to hit. So yeah. I violated all manner. <laughs> what I took away from that, and I wrote a sequel too, which honestly I think uh -huh. is a pretty good book. It's just a, not a good romance book. Yeah. So yeah. I, I took from that. Oh, oh, oh! You cannot just do what other people are doing. Right. You succeed yeah. at this. You have to figure out what is going to work for yourself. Yeah. And so what genre book that sells well would I like to read that I have liked reading in the past that I think I could write? I, I set that up. And so mysteries was the way for me to go. I love that. Yeah. And then I thought, let's just add on some things to make me like it even more. I'll set it in France where I wish I lived. Mm -hmm. I'll write about food a lot because I like that. And right. then it will, I'll get a lot of pleasure out of it. And hopefully that will translate into the books and my readers will like it too. Awesome. And I think that has worked out pretty well. And when was that? Uh, 2015. Okay. All right. Um, very good. Very yeah. good. I think that's really smart to mm -hmm. build, like you intentionally designed it in a way that it was you were writing mystery, which you enjoyed, but then you added in all these extra things that also had appeal to people like everybody wants to go to France, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody would love to travel to France and yeah. eat great food. So that has that helped you? Because it's a pretty long series. Has that helped you keep writing it over the years? It has. Yeah. So how many books do you have now? Uh, I'm working on the 12th. Awesome. Wow. That's great. That's great. I'm thinking I might cap it at 15. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure, but I can see that I think it will get stale mm -hmm. at some point for me to write. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's good. Then I get to think of something else to do and yeah. you know, right. some new series. Right. So that will be fun to branch yeah. out. So right. yeah, yeah. it'll keep it interesting and you can still keep the French angle possibly and do something right. I different think I to keep your readers. Yeah. 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 Well, we always like to ask, um, what is your definition of success? Because everybody's is so different. So how would you answer that? It's a complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, and I think my... But we want your answer right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I, well, I'm going to halfway punt this and, and give several answers because I think it, I think my definition has changed yeah. over time. Yeah. And expanded over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at first my definition was please my readers. Yes. Well, that's still number 1. I mean, nothing is better than having some getting feedback that you've really made a reader happy. Right. So that's important. What I didn't have so much in the beginning was even though I just told you I was doing this for money, I didn't have a high enough ambition for how much money that was going to be. Yeah. So now my idea of success is making a lot of money, not just subsistence money. Right. Right. Um, uh, you know, also, I think I would put in there. Being able to still evolve and learn things, both mm -hmm. about writing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. about business. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that probably covers it. Okay. I think that's those a great good. definition. Those are great. Yes. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, so you may have already answered some of this, but let's go back to you. What do you wish you'd known about writing and craft when you started writing genre fiction, let's say? Mm -hmm. Well, I learned a huge lesson when I started writing genre fiction. Uh -huh. Um, because in graduate school, you can't, you're not going to be able to write books if you're writing two paragraphs in a day. You have to yeah. get it on the page and right. then you can work with it. And I would, I wasn't disagreeing with him, but I just couldn't seem to manage yes. that. Yes. The writing that vampire book opened the floodgates. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, you can really just jump on your imagination like you're on a wild pony and just let it go, 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 go. Um, I love that. And and you can always go back and take out stuff that's dumb later. Uh-huh. Like allow yourself to make mistakes, I guess. 
Right. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of that. Yeah. Don't be afraid of making mistakes in any direction. You just Mm -hmm. have to try things. And some of those things won't work. And some of those things will ridiculously not work. But Mm -hmm. you're not going to go forward unless you keep trying different things. Right. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. I I love it. Constant. You're so constipated. That story of my life. I think that's probably my problem. (laughs) (laughs) TMI people. But uh, yeah, I think that's part of the problem. I I worry too much about what I'm going to put on the page. Yep. And, you know, it's like this inner voice that I was so whispery, I couldn't even hear it. But I think what it was saying was, you don't want to embarrass yourself. Yes. Something people are going to laugh at. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And what I find too sometimes is, am I a good judge of what's good or bad? Like, like if I put it on there, am I, do I have enough sense self-awareness to know this isn't good, yeah. you know, or do I just think all, everything I do is good. Right. That's kind of a, but it's, I can look back over my life and that's kind of been a, a fear for me all my life. You know, yeah. am I a good enough judge of what I'm right. doing to make a and good I, decision? I about think that? when it comes to writing, the answer to that is you are, and you aren't both yeah. together, you know, like Correct. you, you, mm-hmm. You do need to have some other people that you trust that you can share right. your work to so they can say, like, you ran off the rails in this right. part. You know? Right, right. But yeah. on the other hand, if you feel like you can't ever judge, you can't proceed. Right. You yeah. have to be. But I'm sure you guys have had the same experience a million times where you write something and you're like, that is so genius. Yes. <laughs> the best thing in the whole wide world. And then you come back later and you're like, oh my God, it's terrible. You know, it's cringy. It's yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, and it does <laughs> dig and zag like that for sure. Yes. yes. It, it does. Unsettling. It does. And then I've also had the experience where I think it's just horrible, horrible, horrible. And I leave it and go back a week or two later. And it's like, oh, that's really not that bad. You know, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, like, I it's like we're, we're often not a good judge, but that's no. why I guess no. distance. And I think like if you're in a, a writing course and you're turning in stuff, at least we can do drafts and we can revise them and we're not putting out like the first attempts. Right. So right. thank goodness for revision and the ability yes. to have somebody else look at Absolutely. it and say, you know, maybe not, or yeah. this is fine. <laughs> maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Well, what about marketing? Um, what do you wish you'd known about marketing? Um, that you have to do it and do a lot of it. Yeah. 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 You know, I sadly think, true. Yeah. Sadly especially true. now, you know, yeah. I think that there's a little bit of an uh, unexamined assumption that a lot of early writers or people new to publishing have, which is that if their stuff is really good, it will just sell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know that's just not the case. You you have to be willing to spend money to make money. Yeah. And time, time to Uh, figure things out, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true too. That's great. Well, what assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career? And looking back, did they turn out to be right or wrong? Uh, Well, some of these I've already said, like, assuming that if I could write, I could write anything. Well, Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. If you don't really in your heart link up with the thing you're writing, then it's going to come off sort of empty. You know, there's going to be something missing that readers are going to be able to pick up on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that emotional. You have to be emotionally available to your story. Genre. I love that. Yeah. Um. I think I also had a real mindset thing where I didn't think I I I had low expectations Uh, wasn't really seeing it that way right but I think that was the truth so I did Mm -hmm. Mark Dawson's course for example Mm -hmm. way Mm -hmm. way I was like one of the early Mm -hmm. I think I was in his like first or second thing yeah and it worked for me his stuff worked for me very well. I may, I went from not making any money to making subsistence money. 
Mm -hmm. But then I just sort of stopped there. I was Uh like, okay, I can make 40 grand a year. Isn't this amazing? Well, yeah, yeah, it is amazing. (laughs) But how about keep going? Yeah. (laughs) Like I didn't then think, well, if I can make 40, why can't I make 80? I didn't Mm -hmm. think that. Yeah. Right. Which that has nothing to do with. That just has to do with my own psychology, not with writing or anything else. But I think a lot of the time. You know, people think small when mm-hmm. they don't need to think small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I women in particular. Women yeah. in particular. Yeah. Definitely women in particular. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think especially around money, mm-hmm. I just was brought up with this idea that I was not going to be making any. Right. Right. And why? You know, that right. doesn't make sense. There's yeah. a great book called The Big Leap, and she talks about playing big. And how difficult that is for a lot of people, women in particular. Um, it's written for women, basically. But yeah, that we don't play big a lot of the time. Yep. So. Without, we're not even making a conscious choice not to do that. We just, it just doesn't even yeah. enter our calculus. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 I think that, like, I don't think I intentionally set out to limit myself, but there are certain things looking back now that I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I was just planning to be medium. I wasn't planning for big success, you know, and I know that there's like, you can, you can outrun yourself sometimes, but Mm -hmm. it's just, you just kind of have to sometimes reach, change your thinking many times and it can be difficult. Yeah. 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 Well, um, what's the most important lesson you've learned? Do you think? Uh, I think I would say, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's, did you choose the wrong genre? Did you, well, just anything. Don't be afraid to make mistakes in the manuscript that you're writing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes in making experiments with marketing. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you make them, really look at them and yeah. see what you can get out of it right. to help you going forward because almost always there's something. Right. right. So it's yeah. not just you, you're littering your path with errors. You're littering your path with learning is, right. what it, is the way to look at it. Right. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think that's a great one. If you were starting over today, what would you do differently? <laughs> um, I think I would get more people to look at the first book in my series uh-huh. because before I published it. Yeah. Because I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never written a mystery before. And so it's the first book in the series, which is super important, obviously. (laughs) And it's the weakest one in a lot of ways because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And I think if I had shown it to more people and gotten it vetted and and especially found some people who wrote mysteries to look at it Mm -hmm. and give me some help, uh, it would have been a much better book. Mm -hmm. And then obviously Mm -hmm. I would have been more successful. Right. Because you can't, I want to say to people, just get to the second one. Yeah. (laughs) It's a lot better, but you can't can't really put that in an ad, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the like catch 22 of writing a series. Your first book may not be the strongest, but that's the one you have to focus all your marketing on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A series is great. Yeah. Yeah. You might like this one, but you'll love the next one. (laughs) By now. Yeah. <laughs> Great marketing copy right there. Yeah. Cool. Well, we really wanted to talk to you too about direct sales. So this kind of leads into direct sales. And um I got uh I saw one of your uh I don't know if I guess it's a landing page that mm-hmm. has the French village on it. And so t- talk to us about how you do direct sales and how um that's kind of changed your business. Um well sort of the long version of this story is that I 
got long COVID. I was really mm-hmm. sick for a couple oh, of no. years. Yeah. My writing business had, oh, it was a sad, sad, sad thing. And when I got well and, and was getting back to it, I, so I didn't publish a book for like four years or something. Uh-huh. And I, um, I tried going back to doing ads the way I used to do it. Uh-huh. They weren't really working. I wasn't uh-huh. selling anything. Yeah. And so I ended up hiring this group of, I call them the hotshots, yeah. to help me figure out how to do direct sales. Uh-huh. And uh, it was, I had to pay them a lot of money, but it was completely worth it. Right. So the way they taught me is you have a landing page, you run Facebook ads to that landing page, and the landing page you have buy buttons and those are direct. I, I use Thrivecart myself mm-hmm. and I also have a Shopify store. Okay. Is just my Shopify store. I don't have any other website. Um, and the way it's been working for me so far, so this has been like, about four months that I've really been doing this four or five months is that sometimes the landing page I'm selling enough directly to pay for my ads. Sometimes I'm selling enough to be profitable on my ads. Like this month, I'm not profitable on my direct Mm. selling. I'm spending more on ads than I'm making from direct selling. And yet I'm making more overall Uh than ever before. Right. Because a lot of people go to those landing pages and they go, oh, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. But let me go find her on Barnes & Noble. Let me go find Amazon. And they buy that way. So my sales in all of those places that are not direct have all gone way, way up. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting because that does kind of break a rule, doesn't it? You know, the more the more times they have to cl- click, the less likely yep. they are to buy. But you're saying that they go to your, your landing page and go, eh, I don't want to buy here. I'm going to go over here. And then they do that. That's so interesting. I love that, though. I love that that you're you're just able to reach more as many people as you are. I I really like that. So that's good. So I'm spending at this point, I'm spending like $400 a day on ads. Yeah. Which is, a you know, that would have horrified the earlier (laughs) version of me. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But now I, you know, I make back, maybe I make $400 net from that. Yeah. 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 So, and I, I also have not given up on making the landing page profitable. I'm still testing, yeah. still optimizing, and I'm right. going to get that back, you know. Well, your your landing page, is, you, there's a lot of branding and theme on your sales page, and it's really strong. Um, it's the French Escape, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, how did you come up with your branding, and how do you use pictures and text to convey all that? Um. Well... Some of it is from reading the comments on my Facebook ads to see what readers are are liking. Oh, really? So a lot of them would say things like, this is such a great escape. Oh, I love being in France. I feel like I want to live in that village. A lot of them were saying things like that. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with murder or mystery, really. It was right, right, all right. about they just wanted to be part of this village. Right. And so that was what I started to really do in my ads and on the that particular landing page is hitting that. Mm-hmm. I'm right now, I'm working on a second landing page that is doing the mystery part because some of my readers don't really care about the French thing so much, but they want the mystery. So I need to do a completely different landing page and completely different ads to appeal to that. Really? So you're doing two separate landing pages to the same books. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Because think about like 
No, I get that. Yeah. But whatever you write, you've got different angles. Sure. Like sure. Are into it. And so yeah. you want to make offers to those different groups. Right. Like in a romance, like for romance, you could do like for me, small town. Right. Do the whole small town thing. But then you could also books that fall yeah. under those tropes or whatever yeah that's really right. that's so cool yeah i love that well so i'm going to take ask- a drink i've said i love that like <laughs> six times <laughs> so um going back to the uh the direct sales do you feel that has given you um like more stability in your business after like being away and coming back after having long covid do you have a different um perspective on your business? Definitely. Definitely. Um, because what all I did before was Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. I dabbled a little bit in Amazon ads. I never could really get them to work very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I dabbled a little bit, even less in BookBub ads. Couldn't really get them to work very well. Google ads couldn't really get them to work very well. So Facebook ads was really my bread and butter. And so Mm -hmm. when I couldn't get them to work, I was lost about what to do next Mm -hmm. and direct sales and this whole landing page business um, stepped in to save that. Yeah. So do you do any like focused, like social media besides the Facebook ads or? No, not really. I mean, I, I sort of, like some parts of my business I've really neglected, like my email list I've neglected and I'm just starting to try to do that, do a better job with that. Mm -hmm. And social media also I've been pretty awful about. So I I think I used to do better, but when Facebook did made all those changes, this was years ago where they weren't showing your posts to anybody anymore. I was like, well, what's the point of this? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I should have, you know, I should have figured out ways around it or just done it anyway or whatever, right. but I didn't. So I'm now trying to put my big toe back in that yeah. because it is, I think it's, it's definitely helpful because of that whole thing of potential buyers need to see you a certain amount of times before they buy. And so getting out there and and people seeing that you have a relationship with your readers, that's all super valuable. Yeah. Yeah. You may not need to do it as much because it sounds like your landing page does a lot of the work for you as far as drawing people in. So maybe it's not as critical as, I mean, I think not being dependent on social media is a good thing. (laughs) You can sell books without it. Yeah. (laughs) It makes me happy to hear that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She, she, that does make Sarah very, very happy. (laughs) (laughs) I found, I always found it very difficult to stand, to be authentic in social media as in my writing, wearing my writing hat. I wouldn't feel that way if I were meeting people in person. Right. Or if I was meeting them on Zoom or whatever, but having to something about social media and me as the writer, it just felt awkward to me. Right. I'm starting to feel a little more, a little easier about it now, but it definitely took a long time. I think because I felt like there was this unspoken thing that I was always thinking like, just buy my books. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be putting that out exactly. But at the same time, I did want them to buy my book. I just felt uncomfortable and a little cringy. Yeah, Yeah. I get that. I get that. Well, um, I also wanted to ask you, too, about um, your psychological suspense. You write psychological suspense as well, right? Yeah. So are you not focusing on that as much? Well, I want to. (laughs) <laughs> I really, really enjoy writing that book so much. It's very dark, but it's so dark. A lot of my mystery readers were never going to go there. Uh, Some people even were like, I'm unfollowing you for writing. Oh, wow. Writing that book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I hope to get back to that, but I just need to make a certain amount of money with mysteries before I allow myself the vacation of writing that book. 
Yeah. That book is sort of literary. It's like literary and dark and, yeah. um, you know, it's sort of, it's a little bit hair raising and, and the mysteries are not bad at all. You know, they're right, much more right. friendly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like, a great way. You gave them a dark soul and they were like, whoa, back up sister. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And also the language in that book. Yeah, I mean, people yeah. are F-bombing every five seconds. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, They're like, not today, Satan, yeah. not today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny, though, that you I said you'll that. take a vacation. And, and that would be your yeah, vacation, your break. <laughs> yeah, which I think yeah. that's a great way to think of it. Like, that's your break. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. should hang out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That is really funny. Well, what's the best thing you think you've done to set yourself up for success now? I think the best thing I have done is learn how to ask for help. Ah, uh, that's and very good. Reach yeah. out to other people. And, you know, this writing community is so awesome. People, mm -hmm. almost everybody is dying to help. Yes. You know, yeah. we like helping each other. Yeah, we do. And so whether it's like somebody reading something or helping with ads or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I am at a point now where I have to be really protective of my writing time. Mm -hmm. I like learning things so mm -hmm. I can get lost in things like Photoshop and mm -hmm. Facebook ads when right, I right. really should not be. I should let somebody else do that. So yeah, like yeah. yesterday, I'm making this new landing page. I had this image that I needed to do something to. And I started going down the YouTube rabbit hole <laughs> of trying to figure out how to do it. And then I said, no, no, no. You need to ask somebody to do this for you. Yes. Just go to Fiverr and pay somebody. And, you know, you have yeah. other fish to fry. Yeah. And yeah. the more. That's wise. I do that, That's wise. The yeah. The more mm -hmm. I do that, the better. Yeah. That's wisdom for you folks right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to follow that advice a lot more. Yeah. Because I, I love the rabbit holes and I love figuring I these too. things out. I do too. I do too. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, this has been great. Now we have loved having you tell people where they can find out more about you and about your books um, online and in person or wherever. <laughs> you can find my books at nellgodden.com. That's N-E-L-L-G-O-D-D-I-N. -E uh, -E uh, and I'm on Amazon and all the other platforms, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Google Books, all those things. Awesome. Awesome. And, and in a lot of libraries, too. That's great. I love that. I love that. And are you, uh, do you have audiobooks, too? I do have audiobooks. And are they in libraries as well? They are. That's great. That's great. I think that's such an underutilized resource, I think, for a lot of readers and, and writers. We don't really think about that as much. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you here. Sarah's having some connection problems. I don't know if she's back on with us or not, but uh, it's been great to have you here. We want to thank everyone for listening today. Uh, you can find all the links at wish I'd known them podcast.com. Thanks to for Adriel Wiggins for the administration. And remember, if you want to support us, you can do that uh, at that same email, I mean, same website. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.